As more and more people are being laid off from their jobs during the COVID-19 pandemic, most are wondering what happens with EI or individual disability benefits. Nanish Kotak from Kotak Law uh, joins us via Skype to answer some of those questions. Uh, thanks, Nanish, uh, so much for joining us. Uh, roughly how many people are applying for EI uh, as we speak? I know the numbers are getting overwhelming, aren't they? Right, these are really unprecedented times. And, and I think, in fact, as early as uh, the beginning of last week, it was a million people. The expectation is that there'll be four million Canadians, in fact, applying for uh, some sort of EI. Um, we do have the uh, new federal plan that uh, our Prime Minister came out with, and that is $2,000 a, a month for those who have been forced to stay home as a result of uh, this pandemic. So that there'll be an interplay between those, uh, in, in those two benefits, in fact. Uh, what, are the, what happens to the uh, disability benefits if laid off due to the uh, pandemic? Right. So the Employment Standards Act allows for uh, a period of 13 weeks uh, out of a 20-week period. If you work uh, 20 weeks, you, you can get 13 weeks of a, what's called a temporary layoff. Um, part of that temporary layoff is the employer is, in fact, required to continue making payments for uh, the short-term and long-term disability benefit plan, if there is one, in addition to medical benefits. Um, at the common law, it's often looked at the temporary layoffs are, are not permissible, but our statute does, in fact, allow it. Now, if the, this, the closures extend beyond 13 weeks, which is, you know, unfortunately quite possible, um, those temporary layoffs, in fact, will, could become uh, permanent uh, layoffs where employees are entitled to their notice of termination pay. Those disability benefits, uh, the plan, the medical benefits, are supposed to continue for that, the, the requisite uh, notice period. And Bob, I, I know you know I've been reading up on what some of the insurance companies are doing with respect to uh, those who, in fact, <clears throat> have COVID-19. Uh, they're waiving uh, some elimination periods, uh, some of the waiting periods, in fact, to pay um, uh, short-term disability benefits for those people. Um, it's not clear, and I don't think they're doing that for those who, in fact, are just suffering anxiety or increased depression due to the, to the world situation and to their family situation where they may wish to apply for disability benefits. I believe they will simply have to go through that regular process. Yeah, actually, I wanted to ask you about uh, that because uh, certainly anxiety and mental health issues are, are certainly uh, a prevalent one uh, during this. Uh, and, and the insurance companies, they're kind of assessing, um, it's very fluid, isn't it, in terms of... Uh, uh, what's available and, and how people qualify. It, it, it is, in fact, you know, many of the insurance companies are also working remotely as well because their employees, uh, you know, even though they may be an essential service, they, it's not really safe to go in. So the, uh, I think the response time uh, may be a, a little bit lag. Um, you know, it all is fluid. As we see each day, um, uh, the cases increase and, and the responses have to change on behalf of the governments. And I think insurance companies are going to have to cope with that and look at cases with a, with a very sympathetic eye, uh, given, you know, we're all in this together and everybody has to, you know, bend, bend in certain ways. Um, but I, my, my view is if, if someone develops COVID-19, they certainly would qualify for disability benefits. And if they have increased anxiety, many people have pre-existing anxiety disorders, depression, OCD, you know, compulsive disorders um, that are really going to become uh, much more profound and, and much more, I, I, I think, uh, in, effect, in terms of the effect on an individual. I think you're going to see those types of claims. And insurance companies, are, I, I, I would hope, will look at that with a, with a more kinder eye. Okay, quickly, just a few seconds left, but if people want to contact you, of course, this is impacting so many businesses, right. and how are you operating at Kotak Law? Right, well, we are operating, uh, you know, we're all remote. Uh, we have a skeleton staff of a receptionist uh, uh, at the office just to really take packages and things like that. We're meeting people by the way I'm doing right now, by way of Skype, by way of email, telephone, and we're, we're there to help uh, people who have been denied their disability claims and, or who want, who want to make a claim and, and need some help with, with respect to that. Okay, well, thanks for spending some time this morning and passing along uh, that information. Nanish Kotak from Kotak Law. Thanks so much.